Hi, everybody. Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. Well, with me today, I've got uh, Joe Peterson. Joe and I are going to talk about cloud security. Um, before we get into that, Joe, remind everybody where they can get hold of you. Hey guys, I'm Joe Peterson. I'm the Vice President of Cloud and Security for Clarify 360. And you can find me on Twitter at Digital Cloud Gal, where I talk about cloud and cybersecurity and all that fun stuff. I'm and, also on LinkedIn. And you're you're massive on 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 social media. I mean, um, there was a there was a list out, wasn't there, this week of the top 100 people in the world, and you're on that list, aren't you? I thought you were too. I'm on the list. I know. <laughs> not, this is not about me. This is about you. <laughs> I am on the list. I'm, yeah. That was such a that was such a sweet surprise to see that, but I really enjoy it, and um, I may, have made some great friends on Twitter, and I've met you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've actually someone had someone come to me today. Um, I met her on Twitter. Um, uh, my partner, uh, we were in Seattle um, last year. Um, she lives in Seattle. We went to see her at her husband's shop. Um, and, and, and I wrote to her today. She asked me for some advice on the book. I, I wrote back to her and said, I would be annoyed if you didn't ask me for advice because we're friends and, you know, we met virtually, we've met face to face. And anyway, Joe, this is about you. Um, why don't you give us some background in terms of, um, how you got here and, 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 um, I'd, I'd actually like to know a little bit about, I think everybody would like to know about how you got into social and, um, I, I know you don't think you see, you see yourself as an influencer, but you are an influencer. Oh, that's nice. So um, from a career standpoint, I, I was in the military and learned some of the skills that I've learned in the military. So thank you for all the servicemen and women that um, are serving and helping us right now. And it can be a great place to start. It was for me. Um, you know, I've been doing been doing technology work for years and years and started in the cloud in about 2009. I was an early adopter and I'm super excited about the way that cloud has transformed the way we do IT. It really has. Um, I, I think that if we look at this place and time that we're at right now with the pandemic, um, we are able to be productive and we're able to get our jobs done because of the cloud. And I think that so many of the IT folks that have helped us get there are really unsung heroes. I mean, we would not be doing some of the work that we're doing as a community uh, across companies, across countries, if it weren't for the IT folks, just really putting it all together and giving us the tools to be productive. And the cloud is the underlying foundation for what we're doing right now so it, it's been really cool to see that i know we're here in the uk um people working in cloud data centers have actually been classed as key workers it's not something that's actually um talked about um but um you can imagine when we went into lockdown um if you've got a data center in in the center of london you weren't supposed to go in so they got being called key workers and 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 keeping the the it infrastructure running is a key worker job Absolutely, it is. I mean, we don't think about the fact, you know, so many people, we, we've, I've heard shout outs to the folks that stock the shelves at grocery stores mm -hmm. and folks that are driving trucks. And, but I don't think we've heard enough thank yous for the IT folks, honestly. Yeah, I agree. So yeah. you, you, you've got, you know, you have an, an awful lot of expertise in, in cloud. Um, and I had there's somebody that I'm uh, uh, interviewing soon, which actually talks about um, uh, the different types of services, because there is a there is a, a technical term, isn't there, for um, web services. And um, so the difference between cloud and on premise, one is about do you, do you just want to talk about that for a second? Sure. I mean, there's all sorts and flavors of cloud. The thing, I, the way I like to think about it is everything is a service, right? And we're starting to see some of the tech giants moving their portfolios and, and their and a customer's ability to select things on an as a service basis. It's been a trend for the last couple of years, and we're going to continue to see it. So, 
you know, there's software as a service, there's infrastructure as a service, there's platform as a service, there's all kinds of as a service ways to get cloud services. And then we've got our on-premise situations happen and and on-premise might be, you know, a physical customer site, or it might be a data center. And then the hybrid happens when you are, when you've got a bridge between your on-premise environment and the cloud environment. And then there's multi-cloud, right? So you're doing some jobs, some workloads happen in one cloud, and then some work, work, workloads happen in a different cloud for different reasons. So it's quite a lot when you think about it uh, for an IT professional to manage and think about, right? Yeah. So so what is cloud security? G g give me your definition of it. So really super simple, and I just want to make it simple. Cloud security involves the procedures and technologies that secure cloud computing environments against external and internal cyber threats. And I think it's important, isn't it, to, to mention that there is external, but there's also internal as well, because I think um, I, there's some reports somewhere about how um, a, a lot of uh, things that happen to organizations actually take place from people within the company. Yeah, I mean, you've got to guard against both, right? Yeah. You really do. Yeah. So um, why why is cloud security different from the regular IT security? I mean, surely it's the same. So you're right. The thing is that for the most part, cloud security is IT security. But part of the confusion happens around footprints, right? Footprints have changed. So we talked about that a little bit earlier, how, how where a company's doing their, their work happens either on premise or in the cloud. So that's what I mean by a footprint change. So most companies today are hybrid and most of us work remotely today. So we're accessing corporate tools and systems outside of a corporate network. So security has a lot to do with access and traditional environments usually control access using a perimeter security model. So think about, you know, moat and fortress kind of a thing, right? Cloud environments are highly connected and it's easier for traffic to bypass traditional perimeter defenses. So next we're in this world of everything as a service, sort of what we talked about, right? Threats are becoming more sophisticated. Sophisticated threats are anything that negatively impacts modern computing, which, include, which includes, of course, the cloud, right? So knowing what tools you're using is really super important. Quick story, I was doing a cloud security assessment for a client. And one of the tools that I use is this really slick external visibility tool that lets me take a look at external facing IPs. Right. And so I asked the CFO, well, hey, how long have you been an AWS customer? And it could be any cloud, could be any provider. Yeah. And he said, oh, we're not. It turned out that three separate environments had been spun up in you know, a cloud. And IT wasn't aware because the bills were getting funneled back via their these managers' credit cards. Right. So they sort of avoided IT so that they yep. could do, do their own yep. thing. Maverick, Maverick buying it. Bit of Maverick, right? So being able to be productive with the clouds is a really positive thing, but companies need to think about policies and governance around the cloud because how can you protect what you don't know about? It's sort of like you know, giving a 16 year old a, a, a car. You're really happy when they get that car because they've got this great energy and it's this much needed mobility and you're not the parent toting, or, toting them around anymore, right? But they need to be monitored. So the yeah. same thing happens with the cloud. Right. Yeah. And, and what is meant by the phrase that cloud is a shared responsibility model? So the easiest way to think about it is that it relates to, is to put things in buckets, right? So security of the cloud, that is what the uh, cloud provider is responsible for. And if you think about, you know, the hardware, the software, the networking, the facilities that that, that provider is coming out of, the data centers, as we were talking about earlier. But customer's responsibility is what happens in the cloud. Right. So the amount of the uh, the amount of configuration work around security falls on the customer, because at the end of the day, the data 
is the customer's responsibility. And sometimes people don't realize, oh, hey, that data is my responsibility. They think, oh, it's safe up in the cloud and I, I really don't need to think about it. So they do need to think about it. We had that a lot with GDPR over here in the UK back in 2018, where a lot of people were saying, well, um, the data is in, CR, in the CRM. Therefore, it's the CRM vendor's um, responsibility, and it's not. It's it's there. That's right. It, it it's right. And you guys are ahead of the fact, you know, with GDPR, and we're not we're not there yet. But somebody that has, you know, just because they're based in the U.S., we're going through it with a client right now. They do have G GDPR to think about, and they've they've got all these other things to think about because their customers, their end users, are spread all over the place. Yeah, just. To clarify, because I'm in Europe, if you want to market to me, even if you're based in the States or you're in Nigeria or you're in, in Mel Melbourne and Australia, you have to comply with the GDPR regulations of, of, of Europe, even that's though right. you're, even though you may be uh, outside of Europe. So uh, and I think that's that's often not seen. People often don't understand that. Yeah, it can get very super complicated because you're right, depending on what part of the world you're in, there's all kinds of regulatory constraints that have to do with the data that sits in the cloud. So so can you share a few things about what your approach is to, to cloud security? Well, I think that it, most people need to think about three things. They need to think about compliance, they need to think about lifecycle management, and they need to think about continuous monitoring, just sort of like what we were talking about before. You can't just stick it up in the cloud and think that everything's going to be cool. It's not. So we were just talking about compliance, right? It could be that your, your, your data is housed internationally and you've got to think about things like GDPR. It could be that you've got other regulatory strength constraints, like here in the U.S. we have HIPAA. And so that, that's got to do with patient data. So I'm not quite sure what it is in the UK, but here in the US, patient data has to be protected. And then you've got to think about life cycle management. Cloud sprawl happens to all of us. So it's really, it's kind of funny to, in my head the way I think about things sometimes, but cloud makes it easy to spin up new instances and mm -hmm. really easy to forget about them. So you remember the old horror movie, The Walking Dead? Yes. All right. So with neglected cloud instances, they're like zombies. They're neglected, but they're active and they're still wreaking havoc. And the havoc that they're wreaking is they're costing you more. They're costing you money. But more importantly, their security is super questionable. Right. So yeah. these these it's just and then continuous monitoring. If you're not sure of what you have and aren't monitoring what you're not sure of, then you're really asking for this cloud security breach. That's what you're asking for to happen. So, yeah. So, I mean, um, we're now living in, in difficult times. Um, I must admit, I thought within, well, I, I had my car in for um, um, uh, an annual service back in March and the uh, uh, garage basically phoned me up and said, uh, oh yes, well, we're just closing for three weeks. I think they completely had not understood about what was happening with COVID. And here we are um, six, nine months later. What, what, you know, we've all been impacted by COVID-19. What is it that's basically, what is, how is that affecting cloud security? Well, all kinds of ways. So, you know, three of the biggest things that we've seen in relation to cloud security and COVID-19 are DDoS attacks, mm -hmm. phishing and malware, and then cloud sprawl. So, 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 so people watching, what's a DDoS attack? Oh, it's a denial of disservice. It's a denial of service. It's where people basically keep um, f far, firing at your website until they basically to, to, to take it down, yeah? Right. They fire at your website until they take it down. Yeah. You know, and we know what phishing and malware are because, yeah. you know, we all get those those emails that say crazy things and click here yeah. and you just sure. know my lottery. Yeah, I usually get them about um, um, your Chase Manhattan um, uh, bank account has been hacked. Please click on this link. And I was going, I don't have a Chase Manhattan bank account. You know? Right. That's just it. And, you know, they're so sometimes they're so good. They're very I mean, good. Yeah. They're so good. Right. I got one the other day and I'm a Bank of America customer, which is a big bank here in the U.S. And they do a great job for me. But I got one had has no effect on them, but one of the hackers was so, or, you know, this, this attempt was so good that I had to look at the email twice 
because I thought, oh my gosh, you know, something's going on, right? But it wasn't, it was just some crazy attempt at getting me to log into some site that I shouldn't log into, right? Yep. So um, it's interesting, Kapersky reported that the number of DDoS attacks that they, they detected and blocked for their clients in the first quarter of 2020 was up 217% compared to the same period a year ago. And, you know, the sad truth is that bad actors are always going to exploit a crisis. I, my heart breaks when I hear about hospitals getting hit because yeah. they're just trying to help people, right? So IT security teams and hackers alike know that over 90% of data breaches are the result of human error, right? And with so many people working from home and they're cut off their regular IT security folks and there may be more working more hours than before. I know I'm working more hours than before. Wow. Um, you probably OT, right? Now's the perfect time uh, for hackers to sort of test the limits of what's able. And I, I read this other stat and I thought this was interesting. Google's threat analysis group reported in mid-April that they blocked 18 million COVID-19 themed malware and phishing emails a day. A day. A day, right? And we talk about the great side of the cloud. The cloud has kept us all working. You know, um, it, it really has. But sometimes the security policies, and again, the IT folks have been the heroes, but sometimes the security policies have taken a little bit of time to catch up, right? People hadn't thought about or they didn't get to really think through, gee, what do I need to do to make this super secure since everybody's gonna be working a different way? So that's kind of one of the things to think about and, and some of what's happened, right, in, in the yeah. universe yeah. since COVID's happened. So, so what, what few things can organizations do to make their cloud environment more secure, Joe? Oh, well, so there's this whole checklist of things that they can do, right? But there's three that come right to the top of my mind. And that would be using automated security tools, providing cloud security training to your users and getting your configurations right. You know, configurations are one of those things. There's so many security things that happen from bad or misconfigured. You hear about them on the news, right? And and it's a fact, somebody goes in and fixes something or they, they, they set something up and they don't set it up it correctly and misconfiguration is a big deal and while i'm sort of on that you know I, i'm super excited because i'm seeing teams start to cross train employees right so somebody who really knows networking is now learning cloud and that's a good thing because they bring their expertise from networking into play um but a lot of times people people get on with the public cloud provider and maybe don't have somebody on staff that really knows how to deal with it. So we've had this bit of a learning curve happening. We've all been, um, we've moved, aren't we? Everybody's now working from home. Um, right. and, and everybody has quite often, I mean, we buy our own device. So, you know, there's, there's so much, um, so much trap, um, disruption going on right now with, with internal IT. Yeah, I read this, again, another study. I'm, I'm always reading these things because I'm curious about how we're evolving. And we are evolving with cloud, right? But I, a study said that 92% of IT professionals are concerned that their organizations may be vulnerable to a data breach due to cloud misconfiguration. So these cloud security gaps uh, are generally due to a lack of security awareness or poorly defined or Im implemented controls or this general lack of oversight, right? They happen. So remote work environments are particularly vulnerable, like we talked about, because IT departments maybe aren't there to help you. Mm -hmm. So when you're transitioning to this cloud-based remote work, it's really important to think about, do you have everything locked down? And do you have a good architecture set up? Yeah, um, we talked in the, um, uh, I think I mentioned it to you when um, in, in, in the area that I live in London, um, there's a, um, we have, we have to pay a maintenance fee because we have people that do work in the gardens and stuff. Um, and um, I contacted them and they, and the, there was a person that said, um, you, you can't email the, the, 
the people in the company and i said why not they said because they're working from home i went like what uh, and they're working from home so so they, they were paying someone to go in the office to take the e the emails would come into the office and then the person would forward it to the, the the people's personal email account because the people were working from home so they couldn't oh access their work email f remotely from home oh my yeah that's but, but you can understand how we got into that situation because they're an office-based company they're a, um you, they're they're real estate as you would call them um so they go into the office and they do the work they would never they they never would expect to work from home um so they'd never set up the, the the it to do that and i think um i mean you mentioned you've also mentioned about the the amount of you know that the you know teams the expansion of teams that have taken place um and um i've wrote written down 19 million and then 75 million but i know there's something like three is it 500 700 million users using teams a day now or something Geez, so I'm probably off here, so forgive me, but I had read some statistic that Teams had 19 million daily users at the end of November of 2019. Yeah. And by the end of April, it was 75 million daily users. Yeah. Right, so I don't know what it is now. It's probably more than that. I heard it was like two, three, maybe even 500, you know. Could, it could be. I mean, yeah, I mean, it could be, but you make a really interesting point. If you think about that 80% of and a, a company's employees, barring certain industries, but worked in an office and then 20% were remote, kind of that 80-20 rule, right? COVID has flipped it on its head. And so many of the things that we've done for years, many of, of like, let's pick on the poor old VPN, which does a good job for folks, but many of the things that we had used for years and set up just weren't equipped to handle that, that kind of onslaught of of people right that flipping it from from the 20 percent to the 80 percent of people were using this tool or this service and so it's really given companies a chance to re-examine hey is that and again i'm going to pick on the poor vpn a minute but is the vpn the way to go anymore right is that something that we learned how to do 20 years ago really the thing that is going to work and so we're seeing this move to zero trust where Zero Trust is, is able, as one of the components, it does more things than this, but identify the user as opposed to the device that's coming in. Because Tim, I could log onto your laptop if I had your password and yeah. get into some, and everybody would think it was, it's Tim coming in, right? It's not Tim coming in, so. And so, I mean, you're talking about both a tooling shift and a mindset shift. Yeah, that's a really good point, it is. And I don't know how long this is going to last. You know, something I read the other day that said maybe a year from now, 40% of us will be back in our offices. So that still leaves 60% of us at home, working from home, right? So it's a different way to think. We're going to have to figure out some things. Yeah, I heard some things I was told off the record about there was a bank in the UK had done a, had worked out. Um, uh, if they shut their offices um, and made everybody work from home, would that give them more money or less money? Uh, and they'd worked out that they could increase their profits significantly by moving everybody and basically shutting the offices and moving everybody to home working. We're seeing this with some of our big clients. Uh, they're coming through and, you know, they're saying they're looking at their wide area networks, for example. And you know, every time you have a, every time you have an office, you have a circuit that, and and all kinds of things that connect that office, right? And they're they're looking at which ones offices that they need to shut and how much that can reduce their budgets, mm -hmm. like which are critical. And when you get into companies that have 100, 150 offices around the world, that can be big dollars for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, Joe, final question. What will be the some of the permanent changes that will take place to cloud security? So look into the future, really. Yeah. So look at two words, digital transformation. Why? Because we're all consumers. Every one of us doesn't matter. And we're demanding these amazing digital experiences today. 
So, you know, we were all sort of futzing around and working on digital transformation and, you know, doing good work. I was work too on busy it, in meetings to do the digital transformation, but yeah, no, I'm joking. Right? Yeah. yeah, right. So, so, but it's happening and it's real. And the, the reality of it is that people, companies are going to get left in the dust if they don't digitally transform because we are demanding it as consumers, right? We just are. So, you know, I think we're I think we're demanding it as employees. Yeah. You know, right? I mean, all the, you know, if you think about I mean if IT, if you think about the way that IT is being driven, a lot a lot of it, if not all of it, is driven from we have an experience of IT at home, Facebook, Amazon, um, uh, Netflix, um, and we come to work. Um, and I remember when I used to work for a big corporate, um, that you know they were there were people coming in and the accounting system they were using was green screen um um and and and, and why you may like to green screen because you were able to key ahead and because you know where the the uh, uh things was and it actually worked faster than than a mm -hmm. graphical user interface i mean they the the their big problem was that or they would have um to use this system, I have to use this browser at this version, and therefore I have to have a different PC which has a different browser, which is a different version to log into a different system. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, as customers, consumers are savvy, and they, they take their data privacy seriously, and they're getting savvier, right? So, because we're digital transforming, the digitally transforming everything that we do, the thing that I would say is there's not going to be any wiggle room for not taking security seriously. Because not only is it an IT problem, but it's a brand problem. Organizational revenues are going to depend on being secure and customers feeling that they're secure, right? It's a perception thing as well. I, I agree. Yes. Sorry, you're saying some good things, and I'm making a note. Sorry about that. Yeah. So uh, those are my two pennies. <laughs> my yeah, two no, Joe, no, pennies. It's been fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, um, and th thank you so much for you know sharing your expertise. Remind everybody again where they can get hold of you. I'm on Twitter at Digital Cloud Gal, and it's been so nice chatting with you today. Thank uh, you for inviting and I, me. And I say to everybody, contact Joe on on on. Joe is so social um, and and you are I mean you are I love your tweets I mean you how you can connect cybersecurity with humor and I'm saying this deliberately so people go well how does she do that and then they come and look at you I want people to be curious um, but I mean you 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 how you make cybersecurity funny is is such a great thing on Twitter and I want everybody to go and check it out Thank you. Thanks for having me. And you're welcome, Joe. And have a fantastic day. Thank you so you much. Too. And I and I am gonna um take you up on your um in the new year. We will come I will see you again and we will talk about um some of the other things that you're doing in, in IT, especially about the promotion of women. So I promise I will I will come back to you on that. Lovely. Thanks again. Thanks, Joe. Bye. Great seeing you today. Bye. You